Good people YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and we finally have a regular production white Speedmaster that was teased a few months ago, but it was released a few days ago here. And even though it's just a new dial color in a sea of different Speedmasters, this one still ends up being quite special, I think. So now that I've let this new release sink in for a bit, in this video, we're going to go over what this watch is all about and why I'm loving it so much, but also whether I think the watch itself and the price are each worth it, especially over the standard black dial speedy that I have, the older version of over here. So yeah, let's just get into it. Oh, and all the photos are press photos and from Fratello. So there you go. So one thing that many brands are guilty of is releasing a bunch of limited editions and special editions to the point that most of them really don't feel that limited or special. Seiko and Grand Seiko are very guilty of this, but also Omega, although each brand has their winners as well. So in that way, a new Speedmaster Pro isn't necessarily a brand new thing, but this new regular production fully white dial speedy is not only something that we haven't really seen other than the Alaska project and their, I think it was like a 2020 Tokyo Olympics version and I don't know, probably a lot more than that, but this version that just got released is easily one of the best looking speedies out there and even almost chronographs in general, I think. Because while there can be really cool limited editions and special editions, sometimes it's just nice to have a clean white dial Speedmaster that doesn't have any extra special flourishes and writing and this and that and connections on the dial or on the case back. And I'm no Speedmaster historian, but I think this is the first ever regular production, fully white dial Speedmaster that's been released. Speedmaster Pro, at least, I think. Let me know down in the comments if you know the answer for sure. So of course the white dial is the main thing for me here, especially how I now really enjoy white dial watches with black bezel, something that was a hard no not too long ago, but ever since I gave it a go on my Seiko Slim Willard SPB313, I've been really warming up to this color combination. The dial is lacquer, which will look really fantastic, like wet paint almost, and the hands and indices are polished black, which looks gray in many lights, but also very black in other lights. And it's something that I've experienced for the first time again on my Slim Willard and I still love seeing that transition. You almost get like two separate looks. Oof, it's it's, it's stunning. So the only fully white dial speedy that I can think of is the Alaska Project, which has a cool story and the hands and the subdials are really, really awesome. But for me, there wasn't quite enough balance in terms of contrast. Only the hands and the bezel were fully jet black. The rest of the minute track and markings were just black dashes, but they were thin black dashes, so you don't really have that much of a visual impact from them. So. As a result, the dial feels kind of empty. This new version has 12 black indices and that adds the much needed balance. But the trade-off here is that the indices aren't loomed like on the black dial version. And other than the hands, all you get are just the tiny little dots on the outside of those indices. So yeah, not an ideal situation, but I think it could be a worthy sacrifice once I see it in person. Oh, and the touch of red in the writing and the tip of the chronograph seconds hand is spot on because it stops this dial from being a bit too sterile in that way. And it also adds and connects to its motorsport origins, I suppose. Oh, and then also this comes in the bracelet and a black integrated rubber strap, which looks really, really awesome, and a perforated motorsporty leather strap. So is the watch and the price itself worth it? And I have the Sapphire Sandwich over here with the 1863 movement that I got way back in 2017. So it's gonna turn seven this May, which is just crazy to think about. But anyways, I've always seen the Speedy as an elevated tool watch because the case looks and feels fantastic and that movement is such a treat to stare at and explore the many layers. But the tool watch aspect comes from the matte black dial and the white painted indices and markings. And this tool watch aspect is a big part of the allure of this watch because it was used as a tool going to the moon and all these other space missions and whatnot. The white dial version with its lacquered dial and the polished hands and indices, I'm sure it's gonna look and feel much more luxe and striking on the wrist. And for me, if I had to choose between these watches solely based on the watches, I think I would go for the white dial just because it's, oh, it's just, it looks really striking. 
But if I did want a little bit more of that tool watch aesthetic and also a little bit more connection to space and its history, then you kind of have to go with the black dial. And the black dial looks incredible for that matter as well. So that's a good thing. And then there's the whole thing about the price. And it's $8,100 for the white lacquer dial and $8,000 for the standard black dial version. And it sounds like a lot because it is a lot of money. And I was taken aback from it just because I had, hadn't checked the prices on speedies for a while. But as I said, in a previous video about the Seiko Field GMT, our collective mindset about pricing is stuck in 2015 to 2018, that, those years. When I got my Sapphire Sandwich brand new, it retailed for I think like $6,200 back in 2017. And I think that was a fair price for a brand new, warrantied, well-made, historically significant, great looking chronograph from Omega. Oh, and then also it's got that incredible looking movement that you can actually see because it's a Sapphire Sandwich. And so I adjusted that $6,200 price for inflation, and today it would be $7,800, which is $200 less than its equivalent today. So yeah, put in other words, for an extra $200, you get a vastly superior bracelet, a better dial, the dot over 90, and a movement that has come to the 21st century because it's anti-magnetic, metas, sort of, master, blah, blah, blah. blah. Metas Master Chronometer certified, and it's finally got hacking seconds. And I think that's a pretty fantastic upgrade for an extra $200. And I would have gladly paid for those upgrades had those been available as a choice somehow back in 2017. And then on top of that, for an extra $100, you get a white lacquer dial and applied three-dimensional black indices that just make for such a elevated looking watch on top of what the Speedmaster already is. So yeah, you should absolutely try to get a discount whenever possible, obviously, because why would you spend more money than you have to? But to say that this is just way too expensive with no merit to back it, is just a bit much and it isn't really based too much on the facts in the numbers. So yeah, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments and until the next day, next day, next video, good day.